This film attempts to picture the way in which the tides move around the British Isles, and it deals with the average tide. Here is a chart which shows the average tide in diagrammatic form. The first thing to notice is the shading, which is used to show the variation in range of tide. The light shades indicate small ranges, and the dark shades large ranges, in steps of two feet. The large ranges are to be found in the English Channel, St George's Channel and the Irish Sea, and particularly in the Bristol Channel and in the Gulf of St Marlow. In the open sea, the ranges are small and at certain points the range is in fact zero. These points of zero range are very interesting and they cause great surprise to those who think that tidal movements are essentially simple. They are called amphidromic points because the tides appear to rotate around them. This is suggested by the 12 lines which radiate from the points. The lines are called co-tidal lines and each one shows where high water occurs at a particular hour of the tidal cycle. There are three systems in the North Sea and one to the north of Ireland. One is off the screen to the north in the region of the Faroes and one to the west in mid-Atlantic. Not quite so obvious are two incomplete systems where the lines converge on a point in land, one in the English Channel and the other in St George's Channel. It is instructive to take one line from each system and allow it to trace out the movement of high water. In a similar way, the pecked lines show the movement of low water. At an amphidromic point you will notice that the high water lines change into low water lines. The complete tidal sequence of 12 hours 25 minutes is here condensed into 16 seconds of film so that a day's tides are shown within the space of half a minute. For simplicity, the lines are shown to move in a series of jumps, each of which represents the movement made in a quarter hour. This helps us to understand the time scale, but we must imagine the actual tide moving smoothly and continuously between these positions. From the original chart, we have examined both tidal range and tidal movement so that by combining the two, it is possible for us to build up a fairly comprehensive picture of tidal characteristics around our shores. This is done in the following sequence by means of shaded contours drawn in steps of two feet of tidal height. The darker shades representing high water and the lighter shades low water. The tides which we experience around our shores are merely the response of the shallow seas to the changes of level at the fringes of the North Atlantic Ocean. It is in the ocean itself that the fundamental tide is developed due to the attractive forces of the sun and moon. In the English Channel, the response takes the form in the main of a simple seesaw motion. Only one major complication is present and this is due to the effects of the Earth's rotation which tends to deflect moving bodies to the right in the northern hemisphere. You can see how the range of tide is much greater along the French coast for this reason. In the eastern part of the channel, notice that the movement seems to pause where a large area has its high water at the same instant. As we focus our attention on the St George's Channel and the Irish Sea, it is interesting to see that the response to the oceanic tide is surprisingly similar to that of the English Channel. In fact, the two channels are not unlike in shape and their depths also are comparable. Here again, the range of tide is considerably greater on the right of the channel. As the movement continues to the north, there is the same tendency to hesitate which was seen in the English Channel as the whole of the Irish Sea has its high water within a few minutes. Six hours later, of course, the same effect can be seen in the low waters. Further north, the range is reduced, but the movement continues by way of the small rotary system north of Ireland to rejoin the tides of the North Atlantic. In the North Sea, however, with its more open waters, the picture is very different. 
We did see earlier that over wide expanses of the sea, the range of tide is quite small. This is borne out here by the extensive area covered by a single shade. But more important is the greater freedom given to the movement, allowing the effects of the Earth's rotation much more scope for development. As the high water enters the North Sea around the north of Scotland, it is deflected to the right and seems to hug the British coast. However, since the movement is not confined within a narrow channel, as it was in the previous sequences, the returning currents, some six hours later, are able to maintain the high water to their right, this time moving northwards along the Scandinavian shores. The movement is in fact rotary, and the shade junction, which represents mean tide level, can be seen to rotate around the amphidromic points, as did the co-tidal lines of an earlier sequence. After examining in detail these selected areas, we can now view the overall picture and see how the separate systems interlink to produce the tidal sequence around our shores. In the first place, it is possible to see how the whole complex cycle of events is set in motion and maintained by the oceanic tide of the North Atlantic. In the west, it is interesting to note how the progression in the English Channel and in the St. George's Channel move at the same rate, emphasizing their similarity. By the time that the high water has reached the limit of these channels, the oceanic tide has reached the entrance to the North Sea, and the high water has commenced its journey down our east coast, relayed through the three amphidromic systems previously described. Twelve hours later, it reaches the Straits of Dover, by which time another cycle has been completed in the English Channel, and the high waters of the two systems join up in this area. As the high water continues around the southern and eastern shores of the North Sea, its height declines and becomes negligible off the Norwegian coast. While following the high water around the coast, let us not forget that this is controlled by a complex sequence of rotary movements over the whole area of the shallow seas. The partially enclosed channels and gulfs respond to the Atlantic tide in their own individual way, according to their length, depth and shape. But the whole area is integrated to give a continuous progression throughout. <laughs> 